Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Forgotten Realms. Why has that happened? There we go. Uh, let's have some faces. Um, today I have playing with me Moon. Hello, I'm playing Kai Morngrove. Who is Kai Morngrove? What do they do? What is their role? Uh, I am a gnome cleric slash druid, just the healer for the group and and the mother of the group. Mhm. Mm I have Jamil. Hey guys, I'm playing uh, Thornum Deepstone, Mountain Dwarf Fighter. I have Oscar. Hello, I'm Oscar or Salty. I'm playing Bellinor Willowind, the Wood Elf Bard. And I guess I'm the skill monkey slash face of the group. And I have Josh. I'm Josh. I will be playing Blake Ashlon, who is a half elf ranger with a secret dragon egg on his back. Shh. Okay. It's um, not very secret now, is it? And uh, at the uh, end of last session, uh, we left off in a uh, sort of rundown area of town. Um, my mouse cursor has disappeared. That's exciting, isn't it? How has that even happened? Um, uh, we were on Candle Lane um, from the one uh, standing under the flickering light of the one street light that uh, is still intact, kept alight by a continual flame spell. Uh, we visited the Skewered Dragon. We also uh, visited the old Zoblob shop. And the reason we did so was we were looking for Floon. Floon has gone missing. Floon is a very well-dressed fellow, um, sort of dark red hair, green eyes, a little gay. Um, and so said the tavern goers that he had been spending the evening with Rainier Neverember, um, who was the son of the old lord. Um, and um, they also told you that, uh, or rather the shop owner told you, um, that as the two departed the tavern, they were accosted by four or five um, bandit-looking fellas. Uh, they had bald pates and tattoos of a flying snake um, upon their head. You knew these to be members of the Zenturim. And you were told by uh, various people that this group are known to operate out of a warehouse on Castle Lane with a sign of a... Um, Flickering, uh, sorry, a flying dragon. Flying dragon, flying snake upon the door. Um, and so you'd headed over to Castle Lane, um, to a ramshackle two story warehouse. And let's, uh, do that. Why is that not doing a thing? Is that doing a thing? Okay, that's doing a thing. Cool. Is it doing a thing, guys? Yes. Yes, okay, cool. I can't see it. I don't know why. <laughs> It's decided to not show me that it's doing a thing. Marvellous. Um, anyway, regardless. Um, so, uh, yep, yeah, we get over to Castle Dane, uh, where you come to a ramshackle two-story warehouse. Um, the warehouse stands at the back of an outer yard behind a high fence. Um, in front of you, you see sort of a fence gate. Um, and uh, behind the fence gate, you see... A small front door, a large warehouse loading door, and a window that somebody has hastily attempted to paint over. Painting so, over the window. Um, seems a little suspicious. So you stand right. outside the gate here. Um, why is my face covered up? Uh, you stand outside the main gate at the left. Let's give us a little party counter. Come on, party counter, turn up. Thank you. There you go. Uh, that is where you stand. And as you look over, do we have any questions? Uh, right, um, I may have a question or two. Um, mm -hmm. this gate then, um, yep. how tall was the gate again, roughly? About seven and a half feet. Um, it's made of wood with a couple little bits of metal. Um, it doesn't appear from your, uh, view to have any sort of locking device on it. It's just a, just a gate and a fence. There's an open yard out in front. Um, you see deep ruts and four, uh, sort of, Large slabs of brick and uh, and stone. Um, Mr. Thornham, if you would give me an insight check with advantage, please. 
Well, we will do. Um, it, it, technically, I think it's meant to be history, but whatever. Uh, well, uh, history would be a lot better than what I rolled, but yeah. Sure. Um, give me the history modifier instead. Uh, that's uh, nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you've seen these ruts before. Um, you know, they're used for carts um, to sort of keep them in place. Um, but you get no more information than that. Uh, but yeah, you see so that the yard is like a sort a of working... loading... It's a loading dock, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely a working place that's being frequently used. It's definitely a, a working warehouse, carts. specifically. Specifically yeah. a warehouse. You see a warehouse loading, loading door. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then there was a window that was painted over, you said, right? Yeah, so basically it's it's like a... It's a stand large window, but somebody's clearly painted over in an effort to prevent people from being able to see it. This could be because they're hiding the nature of their goods, or they don't want any competitors looking in and seeing what they're up to. Or it could be because they're busy murdering people inside. I don't know. Um, but what I do know is it's been painted over. Okay, fair enough. That could be suspicious, but... Mm -hmm. That would be presumptuous. You're in a so. really rough, rough uh, ramshackle part of town, and five people who beat up a, two people and abducted them uh, seem to reside in this place. You can assume it's shifty. Yeah. Like anyone's been there recently, or have anyone yeah. um, looking for us? You see looking signs. Uh, no, uh, you see signs of regular use, um, but uh, you don't see anybody right now available. Um, it's very darkly lit out here. Bear in mind that it's about half past eight, nine o'clock in the evening at this point. Uh, no, it's not. You went in the morning, didn't you? You waited till the morning. Um, it's about half past twelve in the afternoon. Um, it looks like perhaps. Uh, the majority of the business of this place happens at night. Okay. So it's maybe safe. Right now. Uh, Salty, are you per uh, are you purposely trying to make as little of you as possible on the camera at all times? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was, I, was, I, was, I was fixing my... It's just like, you're just hiding from it at all various angles. Yeah, um, I was seeing how, I, how much I could fuck with you, you know? That's fine. Um, right, so, um, I feel like we should get cracking people. Um, you can crack. Does anyone have any way we want to go about this in particular? Or do you just want to try to go in through the front? We should probably check for any traps or anything before we go in. Uh, I'm, I somehow don't think they're going to be trapping this place out if it's got that much um, activity going through it. Yeah, but they would know the traps, and if they're doing shifty shit in here, they don't just want people waltzing in. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> Great, cool. Really glad we want to do this. Fuck it. I guess we don't want to look for chance. Right, uh, well, you can yeah. you can have a little inspect. Uh, yeah, give me a perception check. Um, actually, while I'm doing this, uh, Kai, your passive perception is seventeen. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I believe you're also the insight douche. Um, yep. Oscar, what is your passive investigation? Passive investigation is a twelve. Thank you. Oh, that might not be the highest. Uh, Josh, what's your passive investigation? It is a plus zero. Passive, passive <laughs> investigation. A ten. A ten. Okay, right, no, that's fine. Um, Alright. Okay, uh, yeah, so with your uh, with your little have a look around -ness, um Kai, you notice that uh, a couple of things. Um, first of all, you notice the gate uh, has sort of a... A lever that you pull up and then lift it in. Uh, a character with sufficient strength may be able to open this gate silently um, by lifting the whole gate. Um, secondly, you notice as you look over at the uh, main front door that there is a peephole. Uh, this peephole looks like it's openable from either side. Um, and this would be customary to sort of gain entry or to let people know that you've arrived. Um, you notice that the paint job for the window has been done from the inside of the building. Um, I think that's about everything you get. So you you also that notice that the, the gate is not trapped. Um, Maybe yeah. not typical traps, but things to look out for. Mm -hmm. 
so assuming that you um, would have told everyone about the um, about the whole thing with the gate, yeah. No, I'm gonna litigate myself, so I'm not keep telling anyone. Of course, I'm telling party. Right. Yeah. Assume, right. So assuming. Right. So assuming that you have told me, then um, I'll um, uh, I'll brace myself at, uh, at the uh, gate and uh, get myself in a position to lift that up and. Uh... Okay. Athletics. If you if you don't mind, I'd like to give him guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. As you stand there and sort of uh, give him some encouragement. Uh, you won't words. need to. That's a twenty-one. I. You may have your guidance anyway, fucker. Don't be ungrateful. You have a cleric. Uh, uh, you know it's a DC of 22. It's a D4. D4. Guidance is always a D4. Right, 25 in total. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so you lift this gate, um, and uh, you lift it quite cleanly above its hinges, and then just slide it open and rest it down. This is a fairly easy task, you thought. I'm not out of breath at all. Um, as you do this, uh, Kai, running off the back of your previous perception check, uh, you notice that there is a tiny bit of movement within the building as you look through a small gap in the paint over the window. Blake. Um, you hear uh, a strange noise that you think you might recognize. Can I have a nature check, please? Sure. How's a 17? Yeah, you, uh, you hear the sound of a couple of... It's like a crow's call, but it's a lot deeper. Like a really big crow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't think your character would have a clue. Okay, what you hear a big crow. Um, and you see oh, the signs of a little bit of movement inside the building. Um, and you do see a little bit of movement inside, guys. Um, how do you wish to proceed? Um, do I have anything that would give me the old Hanzoe? No, wait. A fucking sonar? Yeah. That's not the E, is the shift in it. Yeah. It doesn't is really this... matter. Um, no. Um, then no, there's nothing I'd like to do. <laughs> Uh, for reference, to those of you who have no idea to what Joshua is re re uh, referring, um, he is asking if he has tremor sense at level one on a ranger. The answer is no. Um, <laughs> right, okay, an arrow. He should add through an arrow. Oh yes, and he, he's asking if he has an arrow through which he has a psychic connection that also has tremor sense. No. Um, okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, so window, door, big loading door. What are we doing? It's just the door in front of us. Uh, right now, you've got window, door, and big loading door. Big loading door uh, is the big loading door. The window is the little one next to it. And the door is over there. And the door has a peephole if you wish to go and knock and say hello. Um, perhaps you don't. It's up to you. Uh, I like the idea of loading door. What do you guys think? What did you just say? I like the idea of going through the loading door. But I wonder what you guys, what you guys think on this one. Assuming the loading door is closed. They're all closed. And I'm assuming it's a very heavy, large door. Uh, worse than that, it is two heavy, large doors that appear to slide to the side. Not only that, but you can't see any mechanism for opening them from the outside. Yes, I don't think the loading door is the best idea. <laughs> okay, then. That's um, unlike the loading door, the front door um, has a handle. Um, carry on, Blake. Um, can Kai fit through the window? You could all fit through the window if it was open. It's a floor-to-ceiling window. It's a big window. Wouldn't that just be a glass door? <laughs> uh, no, because it doesn't, A, appear to have uh, the... Um, it's not like sort of got a handle. B, it is a little off the, the ground, so it's, uh, it's got a little edge. And C, it has been painted over. You could use it as a door. Yes. If you wish. So you know in like TV shows and movies, is it true that if you like wrap your hand with fabric and then punch glass, it doesn't make as much sound? Uh, quite no. possibly it would make a little less sound. You could, however, use the latch to open the window. I also do believe the point in that is to protect your hand, not make less sound. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to make plenty of noise if you break a window. Uh, yes, however, you do notice quite easily that either door or window could be opened um, 
pretty easily uh, with um, a little bit of dexterity. Okay, I'm gonna go up in the window. You're gonna go for the window. Oh, we can't, we can't like see in there, right? Uh, no, there's like if you imagine the paint has like a few little peelings away, so you get like shadows of certain things. If you wish to spend okay. a minute staring through these gaps, um, then I may be able to give you some more information. But it's up to you if you wish to stand still for a minute on the street or in the uh, yard. Up to you guys. Do we want to go in or do we want to look first? We want to scare right first. Looking. Probably look. I'm okay if you want to take time looking. The one thing you've got to remember right. is you do look quite suspicious from the outside. If somebody comes along, you are standing in the yard of a dock you clearly don't know anything about um, under the flickering lights. But uh, yeah, uh, if you spend a minute looking through, um, you will notice uh, that there are large amounts of crates stacked up all over this room. Um, you see that there are some tables and chairs that are not necessarily all um, standing up. Some of them seem to have been tossed uh, sort of carelessly across the floor. Um, you will notice a couple of movements in there. There's definitely some people in there, but numbers aren't really very easy to find. Um, and you do see a few crates seem to have some weapons in them. Uh, that is all the things you will get from this. It is definitely not an empty room. Well, it looks like if we go through the window, we could hide behind some crates right away. Yeah, needs me. Do I see anything on a table that could be like... I don't see the person, right, that you said I saw before? No, you've seen movements, so you know there's some people in there, but you're not able to get a wide enough perspective to, to see a person. Okay. Right, forewarning, if you want to talk about they'll talk about sneaking in and hiding behind things, <laughs> I am not he should stay outside. <laughs> yeah, I will be staying outside and um, only coming in on being called in. It's up to you. Yeah. Oh, young one. Young one, no, heavy one, flat-footed one. <laughs> uh, regardless, uh, guys, you need to make a decision. You're stood outside this window, uh, looking very suspicious. Are you slipping the latch, Blake? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a thief's tools check. Fourteen. Okay. Um, as you slip this latch, uh, you do just hear this slight sort of <coughs> noise. Um, you open the, the window, um, and as you push it open, uh, Kai, you hear a sort of kerfuffle inside. Um, the closest I can... Ex Where are we? Here we go. Um, yeah, you hear, like, uh, people moving really quickly across the room. You hear a few barrels sort of get knocked over and roll. And then a massive clatter as some swords fall to the ground. Um, you notice very... At the corner of your eye that one seemingly black-cloaked fellow um, is crouching down behind a set of crates. Um... Did I figure out how many people there were? You know there's at least two. Okay. Um, people are coming. Are, are, you open, are you all going in? Uh, I'll be just outside. Uh, okay. Carry I was going to say, we should all get in through the window. I have an idea. Okay. Just immediately. Oh, okay, if you call me in, I'll go straight in then, yeah. Okay, so as we open, right before we open the window all the way, I'm going to cast Minor Illusion to make it sound like someone's knocking on the door. Um, okay. Um, as you get in, you see tables and chairs have been carelessly tossed across the floor. The corpses of a dozen men lie dead upon the walls, along the walls. Their rapiers and daggers are lying close to them, but far enough away that they aren't able to pick them up if they were not dead. On the north side of the oh, area, shit. stairs rise to an open level above. Um, you notice that the corpses are divided into two groups quite neatly. Uh, one group of five and one group of seven. The group of five have the flying snake upon their head. And the group of seven have the other mark. Oh the God. eye tattoos on their head. Um, oh. Sorry, trying to remember. Um, 
Uh, you also uh, notice that one of the uh, group of seven has a large black circle with ten spokes radiating out, radiating out from its circumference. You know this to be the symbol of Xanathar. Um, so you've got two rival guild groups in here. Um, yeah. And they're, and they're both, both dead. dead. <laughs> both sets of groups are dead, but you have seen some sort of black cloaked creatures attempting to hide behind the crates. For reference, the area that you think that they might be in... Um, please no meta, 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 meta gaming, but... Um, you get the idea that perhaps they're over in this area some... Okay. Um, where are we? That's the P, right? Yeah. You just got I in the window. I thought the other one was a window, but... Yeah, uh, okay. it is, it is, it is, it is. You came in the window here. And that red X that you had there was where we think they might be? Yeah, you have an idea that they're somewhere over there, but specifically where you're not sure. Please don't matter game while I move counters. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna just give me the, you had given me the idea that I saw someone. Yeah, you right you've definitely there. seen okay. two people, and specifically, you saw somebody duck down behind this box of crates. Okay. Where you want is? Will these crates be bigger than ten feet in any direction? Um, no singular crate is, but the piles go up to 15 yeah, feet I in the air need, and I sort of 15 feet wide. Yeah, I thought you might. Yeah, no. Um, these between sort of three and five feet. Um, I'm gonna walk towards the crates on the opposite side of them. And, uh, there's people on the other side of this. I'm gonna light up the room. You guys better be ready. Uh, the room is fairly well, well lit. Um, you may light up the room if you wish, no. but it is fairly well lit in here. There are braziers burning at all four corners. Oh, great. Alright. Uh... I'm gonna make it dark instead! <laughs> Definitely fucking yes I actually am. Knew that was coming. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable, Cole. Uh, how many people here have dark vision? Just I do. I do. I believe our whole team has dark vision. Oh, great, this is gonna suck ass for them. Oh, wait, so um, gonna... does Blake have dark vision? He's the only one I'm sure half You're half elf, aren't you? You didn't go human in the end. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we all have dark vision. Yeah. Alright, the then I am going to Druidcraft take out the lights. What elf? Okay. Um, and as you do so, you hear a strange <laughs> noise. Um, it is like a unusual bird like muttering. Um, bird like? Bird, bird like bird. muttering. Please roll initiative. A bird like. Uh oh, it's me. Like, <laughs> we're, being, we're being attacked by a bird! <laughs> we're being attacked by a bird! Run! <laughs> back in five seconds. Oh, no, back in like 30 seconds. The music is coming. Oh no! Cover your ears. Yes, it is. <laughs> Salty begins playing music. <laughs> okay, um, Bellinor. As the lights go out, um, you're, you do notice um, one little dude um, taking a step. He's, he's attempted to duck out from one of these pillars. Um, and you will see him, and you are the first to react. Bear with me a second while I give you guys individual counters, and then we'll be ready to go. Ready? We don't have individual counters on this map. That is so annoying. Oh, it's good job, Jamal. One AFK. No, what am I doing? What am I doing? I can just do this instead. Not as stupid as I look. I mean, in all fairness, I'm as stupid as I look. Okay, I'm back. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm here. I'm present. Well, aren't you, dickhead? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Bellinor, you see E3. 
Um, attempting, okay, the angles on this isn't very good. I'm really having a struggle here. Um, oh. You would think I didn't prep. Um, I did prep. Uh, yeah, you see E3 attempting to slide up from behind this um, pillar to get a clean shot on you, and you are the first to react, but not. that is the only person you see. What are you doing? Uh, I'll, so I'll move to the box on my right, um, a little bit to the side of it, um, so I can see him. You're going to attempt to move over to the crate. Okay, that's 15, 20, 25 foot of movement speed? Yep, yep and cool. then I will, um, and then I'll call him a fucking idiot. Oh, no. Not a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Whatever a, he's, will he do? Um, he's a fucking a 16 idiot. on his wisdom save? That will be a successful yeah, save as I duck behind the crate. <laughs> Somebody, is this another bard without a crossbow? You do have no, a crossbow. No, I have a crossbow. Right? Okay, oh, I do have a crossbow. But <laughs> Any that, bonus is, action, Is that sir? a bonus action? No. No, that's but, an action. Yeah, yeah that's um, action. you viciously mocked this bastard. Any bonus action? Uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. No, that's all my turn. Okay, cool. Um, and as you uh, move over there... Um, uh, somebody ducks out from behind the crates and shoots at Blake. Um, am I rolling to everybody? Yes, I am. Blake, that's an eight to hit you. Uh, that's a miss. Okay. Um, the uh, Kanku throws um, a strange uh, sort of two-sided bladed weapon at you. Uh, but a little, um, unfortunately, the, the distance he's attempted to throw it is a little far. Um, and... Um, Oh shit, hold on, hold on, sorry. Uh, let's roll that back. Um, I also said that I'm gonna go back behind the crate. Okay, that's fine. Uh, sorry, Blake, that's a 21 to hit you? Sure. Because I just realized they're rolling an advantage. I mean, if it was the party member, you wouldn't retroactively change it, but Yes, sure. I would if you turned around and told me, oh, actually, I rolled an advantage in the dark. Um, yes, uh, eight damage. Um, <laughs> uh, still a miss, again, still a miss on you, Belenor, and you've got another five foot of movement speed to duck back, have you? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, I have thirty five until the oh, start okay. ten. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, okay, cool. Um, and now we come to uh, E one. E one is going to uh, take a throw at Thornum uh, with this strange equa. Um, a 21's okay. gonna hit you, right? Yeah, yeah, a 21's okay, gonna hit. Okay, 9 slashing damage. Ouch, Thought this is bad. Up. This is bad. Uh, fuck. Um, I don't have any potions or anything, do I? Shit. Um, that's awkward. Trust in your cleric. Uh, yeah, yeah, I might have to. Well, I'm gonna, um, charge up to E1 and, uh... For my payback attempt, I'm going to try to uh, bash the fucker's head in with my maul. I am okay, not going to try to swing to knock out. I'm just trying to swing to kill now after being hit. Okay. And as you get here, you do see a fourth Kenku. Right here. Huh? These crow-like animals have what appears to be a short, jagged dagger at one side. And on the other side, they have this strange, curved, hooked throwing weapon. Uh, th well, three of them have thrown it, but one of them doesn't. Um, right. Thorne, go ahead. Roll to smash. Uh, yeah, that's a 20 to hit. Now it. Uh, that's 11 damage. Okay. Um, painful. Uh, is this E1, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's E1. Cool. Does that include your turn? Uh, just checking, see if I've got any bonus actions that I can actually use. Uh, no, it's only on the... Short rests. Oh no! Wait. Once per short rest, you can use bonus action to regain health. Yeah, second uh, wind. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All second wind is a bonus okay. action. Cool. Um. Uh, let me roll that real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I gain uh, five HP. Okay. Um, our lovely little friend here. Uh, you have seen him, but then he is going to disappear out of your sight. And then he's going to pop back out over here. Um, and Kai, that is a... Twenty-two to hit you. <sighs> Five piercing damage. Six. Six piercing damage. Ow. Uh, Blake, you're up. Okay. 
I guess it's up to me. <laughs> um, I will favor my foe. Which one? Upon, Upon which do you favor? E1 E4. has been hit, the rest haven't. Yep, cool. E4 sign. Uh, which is I want to do okay. Um, I, I guess I'll aim my bow mm -hmm. and arrow at E4. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. That'll hit. That is 8 damage plus... That's 12 damage altogether. Ooh, okay. Um, you see that uh, this arrow sort of strikes him uh, just under the shoulder, uh, close to his heart. He reels backwards. You see... And he coughs out, and then he says, uh, in a very strange voice that doesn't suit him at all he says it seems i'm hurt and then uh he falls back and down to his knees um, um is yeah. my band of the dryad in action what does it do i'm afraid if i tell you you'll tell me it's an action <laughs> i don't know what i don't know what it does josh it I, heals me um uh, then it will say on the ring but it doesn't all right, let me read it. Object interaction. Bon uh, sorry, counts as like a potion. Bonus action. Bonus action, yeah. Oh, you've used your bonus action, have you? Oh, no, I haven't. Favorite far is no action. Yeah. 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 I'm uh, taking out my brooch, mm. and the little fl flower is gonna like set a light. It's gonna rejuvenate me. Your ring is a brooch. What? Your ring is a brooch. My ring can be whatever I say it is. Thank you okay. very much. Very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. And but uh, you need to keep the bit of the, like, the small rose petal that blooms. Yeah, as that is sort Just of in the camp. Talked about it. Cool. Okay. Very good. Go get yourself uh, some HP. So that's six HP you gain? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Kai, you're up. Okay. Um, you notice E1 and E4 are severely wounded. E2 and E3 are okay. E4, I'm gonna Sacred Flame. Ah, uh, okay. Um, 15 decks. Yep, yeah. and... Oh, I'm sorry, that's not 20 for 23. Okay, no damage for him, and then I'm gonna Healing Word myself. Okay. Um, you speak words of encouragement to yourself and uh, Bellano. Uh, sorry, Kai, are you staying out in the open? Or are you moving? No, I'm gonna move towards uh... to where Bellano is with the crates. Yeah, towards Bellano. Twenty-five foot of movement speed, right? Or thirty? Uh, twenty-five. 30? Twenty-five. Uh, twenty-five. You can get just behind him. Okay, uh, Bellano, you're up. I will pull my crossbow off my belt. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do have a crossbow. And I will take a shot at E1. Please do. That is a 23 to hit. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's dead regardless, but he is going to be taking 7 damage. Okay, um, the crossbow sort of thunders into his shoulder. Um, right, uh, right on the same side that he's just been hit by the axe. Um, and he, he sort of tumbles down unconscious upon the ground in pain. Um, and... Any bonus action from you? I'll look at Thornum and I'll say, this time, finish him in one blow. Consider yourself inspired. Okay. Um, okay. And that will conclude my turn. Um, no. Our friendly E2 um, is going to take a throw at Blake. Uh, that's a 13 to hit you, Blake. That's a miss. Okay. Um, and then our little friend next to Thornum is going to take a slash at him. That's a 15 to hit you, Thornum? That's a no. Okay, cool. Uh, Thornum, you're up. Uh, the enemy directly in front of you is unconscious. Unconscious. So like E1's not dead, but knocked out. Indeed. He is, uh, going to make some death saving throws. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. 
Uh, rather than try to smack him to death, then, for the time being, I'll get my payback on that fucker later. I'll go for E3, and let's uh, try to bash his um, head in as well with this uh, big old uh, maul. I'm going to um, swing that straight round the side of his head. That's mm -hmm. a uh, 20 to hit again. Yeah. That'll do it. That's nine bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. As I uh, crack this into the side of his head and uh, probably leave him a little bit rattled, right? Yeah, very much so. Uh, does that conclude your turn? Uh, yeah, I'm looking pretty okay. good. Um, at this point, E4 sort of shuffles forwards and... Uh, Hold up the white flag! Hold up the white flag! Um, and then you hear the other one, E2, sort of go, We'd like to surrender, perhaps a truce, if you would. Um... I will offer that to Thornham, as it is currently his turn. Is it? Well, you've just finished your turn, so it's right. on your turn. They are offering You're a truce, a surrender. <sighs> Much as I'd like to do your friend in here, no. I'll, I'll accept it. XP. Damn it. You can say no. They did attack That's you right. blindly I'll in the dark. It. You I'll get accept the same it. Amount. Mm -hmm. I'll show mercy yeah, on these guys. Yeah, what he said. You get you, the same you... amount of XP either way, mate. No, I'll show mercy on these guys. Yeah. No. Okay. They know. They know, they know. They know when they're outmatched, and they'll um, no. Cool. Throw the towel in. So yeah, I'll have mercy. Two hundred XP. Ooh. Alright, let's see. Uh, uh, gonna... Oops. Are, Wrong button. are the people still down? Um, there are two of them Actually, down. No. Um, and no, either way, I'm gonna cast Spare the Dying on the two down people. Yeah, okay. And, so uh, either way. one of them will look to you and. Why, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a woman, but thank you. Uh, oh, of course you are. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, he repeats a few things very quickly. He says, uh, Tie up the pretty boy in the back room. Tie up the pretty boy in the back room. Follow the yellow signs. Follow the yellow signs in the sewers. Follow the yellow signs in the sewers. No time to loot the place. Get him to the boss. Xanathar who? sends its regards. Get who to the boss? Um, I will tell you for free. It does not matter how many different ways you torture these guys. These are the only sentences they can repeat apart from Hold out the white flag! And uh, I'd like to have a truce. To propose a truce. These are the only sentences they'll be able to repeat, um, as they are mimicking ah. sounds and voices that they have heard before. It is up oh. to you whether you think that they are saying them from their own perspective or not. However, one uh, of our uh, little crow-like friends does come up to you and give two bows. And, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I'll, nod, I'll just simply nod my head at him and let him pass. And uh, he will also place a key in your hand. And a, a note. key. Yep, a key and a note. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's uh, take a peek at the note and I'll uh, share it around with everyone. Okay, uh, the note details descriptions of five members of the Zentarim. Um, each with a black tattoo of a winged snake upon its neck or forearm. Um, and... Uh, the bald pate and basically it's the description of the thugs that captured um Floon. It's also the description of the five thugs that are dead on the floor in front of you. Okay. Um oh. if you wish to loot the bodies on the ground just on a by the way, or you wish to go through the crates, let me know and I will do those as and when we get to them, just as a heads up. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. I'll I'll look at the Kenku and I'll say where is the pretty boy that you're talking about? Tie up the pretty boy in the back room! And where's the back room? Tie up the pretty boy in the back room! Can you not uh, show uh, me? He thinks for a moment. Dude. These kind of small creatures. He'll point towards these stairs here. Uh, no, they're medium sized creatures. They're uh, almost six foot. Okay. I'll, uh, oh, okay. Look at the group, and I'll say um, well, just a, that the pretty boy is there. Meta game yeah. note for you, Kai. Um, they, you would not be subject to a speak with animals. 
Um, they are a humanoid. They do speak a humanoid language. It's just not yours. That would have been my I'll, next um... question. If they were small. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, the guy that just told us that, I'll um, tap him on the shoulder, and nod my head at him, and give him a thumbs up. Hope he understands that one. <laughs> yes, it seems the pretty boy is by the stairs, or past the stairs. Yep. My well, assumption is that's Floon. So, uh, let's go and uh, see what the damage is. Yeah. No time to loot the place. Just get him to the boss. Yep. Let's uh, go have a look then. Yeah. And uh, with this, uh, the Kenku sort of gesture towards their fallen companion and point towards the door. Uh huh. And then, quick, really quickly, they'll grab them, run out. And I'll open the door for them as well. Um, Why not? Fuck it. Okay, Let's cool. The door open for them. Um, at this point, uh, is 200 XP enough for you to level up? It's not, is it? Yes. It is. It is? Okay. okay. Um, at this point, uh, all I want you to do is... Um, you can actually just hold off on leveling up for a minute. It's fine. Um, yeah, the door... Yeah, right, so... <laughs> So just double check then. Now that these guys are filing out the door, this the rest of this place so far looks to be Kenku free down here. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, and also, you, you can give me an. In fact, Kai's passive insight is more than high enough. Uh, the Kenku do not belong down here. Um, they were clearly on a mission of some kind to take out these Zentarims. They achieved it. They took out the five corpses that lay alongside the wall. Um, so, that's that's what they were there for. Right. You can assume they fought as much to defend themselves as they did to, uh, for any other reason. To take out their targets, yeah. Okay. As you look around the room, um, as I said before, there are tables and chairs carelessly tossed across the floor. Um, there are a dozen men lying dead along the east wall, the right-hand wall. Um, there are rapiers and daggers lying nearby. Um, and on the north side of the area, stairs rise to an open level above. Hmm. All right. Uh, just going to take a little look around. Uh... Sorry, what was that, Batman? Do you think we have time to loot the place? I'll ask the group. Um, you would notice immediately, Bellinor, that these are very stock weapons. Um, there are short swords by the hundreds. Um, and there are uh, short bows by the hundreds. There isn't really a huge amount else. Um, you're not going to be able to walk out of here with 120 short swords. Um, there are, however, sure a dozen rapiers on the ground next to the um, bodies on the floor, as well as their daggers. Um, are there any hook shots? What's a hook shot? It's, a <laughs> it's like a... Uh, how to explain it? It's a thing you shoot and then it latches and then it drags you to it. The fuck do you think this is? Spider-Man? No. <laughs> um, no, if you are looking for a grappling hook that you can throw, um, there may be one of those, but uh, as far as you know, no one has yet invented one that's shot from a crossbow. Um, um, so, question then, real quick. Uh, as far as stock weapons, do they have things like javelins? Short swords and short or... bows. And short bows and short swords. There's also some short swords and some short bows. And are some, there some arrows? Short bows and some short swords. There are indeed some arrows, if you wish I to take them. Take some they're arrows. in quivers of 20, by all means add three. Um, are there crossbow arrows? Oh, 60 nope. nope, crossbows don't shoot arrows. Um, are yes. there crossbow bolts? You, you just add, uh, no. Um, yes, there is, you can take... two weapon types. You can take 60 arrows! <laughs> I will get that sentence out. <laughs> can I attempt to pull the crossbow bolt out of the t unconscious cake? Oh, no, they're gone, damn it. Um, yeah, they left. <laughs> <laughs> Complete oh, with yeah. the, the crossbow bolts. Um, there are rapiers and daggers on the floor if you need them, but that is about it. Um, I'll pick up a second can right I, here. Okay. Can I take the one arrow I used out of... Oh, no. It's you can just pick up a spare arrow. arrow. If you want to put yourself at 80 arrows, that's fine. Oh, you're giving me an extra 20? Okay. No, I gave you 60, and then you already started with 20. That equals oh, yes. 80. Yes. That's right. Yep. I'll add that now. <laughs> Mathematics. But you have them. I put uh, them in a quiver. What? I put an efficient quiver in your inventory. Did you? 
Yeah, it can only hold 60 arrows, Josh. There you go. So never mind. Make it 60. It's literally in your inventory. Efficient quiver. Extra dimensional space. 60 arrows. Yada yada. Anyway, back to the point. Yeah, back to the point. It's um, like short swords and short bows. Yes, and short bows and short swords. And some short swords and, and short some short bows. Short bows. Yeah, that's about it. Say that five times fast. Yes, short swords and short bows. Now, where are we going? Um, let's knock off upstairs okay, quick, yeah? Okay. Yes, Blake, say again, what? I was just saying to the back room. Okay. Um, yeah, as you get up there, the door to this back room hangs loosely on broken hinges. The cramped chamber beyond smells strongly of sour fish and vinegar. And it's filled with discarded ropes, canvas tarpaulins, and splintered wood from smashed barrels. As you approach, a man sort of moves out. He's covered by grime and the lingering stench of rancid pickled herring. He looks at you. Ah. He looks at you and... Good day. I don't suppose this is a some sort of rescue, is it? My father's... What the hell happened to you? Floon? No. Uh, unfortunately, Floon was... Uh, well, a little loud and a little... Um, a little too pretty. Um, I think that they thought he was me. Uh, he's gone. He's been taken. Um, Where? I, unfortunately, I was not... Uh, sufficiently in a good situation to be able to follow him. Um, my tracking skills are excellent, but uh, my ability to remain unseen is... Well, I didn't want to test it. If you catch my drift... Nevertheless, um, I think the Zentarium thinks my father embezzled a large amount of gold while I was while he was open lord. Um, that he hid the dragon somewhere in the city. Uh, they think they can find it by using an artifact called the Stone of Galore. I heard them talking about it, which is in the hands of the Xanathar Guild until most recently. Apparently somebody stole it. The Zents thought I knew something about all of this, but uh, I don't. Uh, my father and I have not spoken in many years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I do think that they've taken Floon in my place, though. Uh, you came looking for Floon. That text is copy-pasted to the chat um, so that uh, if you need it, it is there. Um, because there was a hell of a lot of lore in that short sentence. Um, yeah, yeah, there was. I was like, wait, wait, what? Hit the dragons? What the fuck do you mean money? So you came looking for Floon. Uh, Floon was a little too drunk to find his way home by himself. I offered to escort him a couple of nights ago, um, but we were jumped by five thugs. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was dressed uh, a little uh, less finery. I, I tend to do so when tending the skewered dragon, not the finest of establishments, I'm sure you know. Um, nevertheless, uh, he uh, was still in his ripper and finery, and for that reason I do believe they thought him my father's son. Um, I, uh, I'm more than happy to help you in your search for Floon, if you would. Um, if you would like the, uh, the assistance. I mean, I wouldn't mind the assistance. Next. Mind. Most amenable. Um, who has two screens? Salty, you. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Salty, if you go to your extras tab. We've never done this before. And you go to manage extras. And you go to sidekick. And somewhere down here, you will find Warrior. Um, it's the one without any level after it. Got it. Uh, sorry. Um, is, he not, is he not? Oh, I'm really sorry. He's actually an expert, not a not a warrior. Oh, okay. Ah. Um, yes. Expert. Let's yeah. delete the warrior out of my life. Um, okay, marvelous. Oh, does he seem... Healthy? Uh, yes, very much so. Um, oh, I don't know why I've told you to use his voice. Uh, very much so. He's absolutely fine. He is covered in a bit of grime and muck. Um, but he looks like he's not that phased by it. He's not the Nancy Pansy you might expect him to be. I just wanted to make sure he didn't need any assistance. Yeah, no. Um... Wait, so he's not, a, he's not a total Pansy and he's actually combat cable or somewhat funner? Oh, very much so. Um, okay, interesting. And, and what's uh, this guy's name again? Just to double check. Um, his name is Renier Neverember. Um, we heard that name before, right? Along with yes, Sloan. he's the well. Neverember was the previous lord. Yeah. Um, and uh, can I, Oscar? Do you have a stat block for him? 
Because I uh, don't have the stat block. Yeah, it's uh, 10 strength, 15 dex, 12 No, 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 no. Hit. His weapons, like an attack. Oh, he has a short sword, dagger, and a short bow. Great. Okay, yes, he's going to pick up a short sword and a short bow from the ground around him and a dagger off the floor. Um, How wonderfully convenient. Yeah. Short swords and short bows. Yeah. <laughs> short um, I, was short just, I was just double checking with that. I knew I'd put the short sword and short bow in for a reason. I was just making sure that <laughs> I'd got the right stat block. Um, he looks over at you and... Uh, I, I saw some strange uh, maneuvering up through this wall. I've been attempting to puzzle out the secret, but... Unfortunately, uh, I, I don't think I've managed it. I didn't want to make too much noise, you see. Uh, but if we could perhaps move a couple of the crates from this wall, maybe uh, we might be able to have a little look through. He's pointing at the back of the room. Um, so you're currently... I'm really sorry. Uh, you are currently here. Um, and he's pointing at the back of this room. And he's saying, if you could move the crates, uh, perhaps you might be able to... Uh, have a look at what was going on earlier behind these crates. Right, well, I'll get lifting. Okay. As you pull the crates out the way, I will take a perception check from Kai, please, and an investigation check from Melanor. Yes, I would also like the help action from my expert who can do that whenever he wants. He can. Um, he will assist. Oh, thank God. <laughs> because I rolled a three, and then I rolled a three. 16. What am I rolling? Cool. Um, investigation. investigation? Yeah. 19. Okay, and the perception check? Because the perception, the investigation check is useless without the perception check. Kai? Uh, 21. Oh, great. Okay, good. Um, I had to roll a <laughs> You're guidancing yourself. Um, yeah, so as you look around, uh, you see a strange pattern of uh, tiles on the wall. Bellinor, as you investigate these tiles, you notice that there's um, traces of fingerprints and drags across them. And uh, you notice that one brick, there's a slight edge um, to it. When you put your finger in this edge, you realize that it is no brick at all, but a facade, a wooden facade. And as you pull it out, you see a small wooden handle. If you wish, you can pull on that handle and twist it. I'm pulling and twisting. Okay, and, I'm gonna and pop it. Uh, a door opens towards you. Oh my god, click on the map. There we go. Um, isn't that exciting? Uh, okay. As you move into this little room, um, you notice that there are two wooden crates. Um, one uh, looks um, very expensive. It is in a dark wood and it appears to be oil sealed. Um, Thornum, give me an insight check with advantage. The other crate... Um, 13. 13? Great. Um, the other crate appears to be uh, just sturdy wood, but this one is oil sealed, which means that it has been used on a boat and it is designed to keep water out. Um, as you look into these two crates, the first one will show you um, four paintings, uh, wood framed paintings wrapped in leather. These paintings depict the cities of Luskan, Neverwinter, Silvery Moon and Baldur's Gate. And uh, Zentel will pipe up immediately and say, good God, those are uh, painted by Rembrasso. Um, they must be worth at least 75 gold each. Yeah, can I get some history on these paintings? Um, they are paintings of Luskin, Neverwinter, uh, Silvery Moon, and Baldur's Gate. Um, in their most recent times, Rembrasso is a landscape painter of the local area. He is based in the College of Artists in Silvery Moon. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that was what I was more interested in, who the guy was. Uh, you know, yeah. painting um, you would assume that these have been sold from uh, Silvery Moon to Luskin and shipped out from Luskin, possibly to Calimport, um, where they would probably gain the most worth. Um, oh, as you look into this... Paintings. Yeah. Um, they're, they're four big paintings. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to walk around with them, but if you'd like to leave them neatly by the front door when you leave, you can pick them up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the second crate contains 15 10 pound silver trade bars um, they are a little black from corrosion but they, they look like they're worth quite a bit um, you may take instead oh that's some maths 750 no 7500 silver pieces is that right 10, 50, 50 gold I need a calculator Yeah, 7,500 silver pieces. Make a note of that, Jamal. Your bookkeeping, don't forget that, Jamal, yeah? 
Uh, yeah, so... Okay. Uh, Four paintings, 75 gold each. Uh, 15 silver trade bars. Four and then paintings, put... 75 G each. Yep, and then 15 silver trade bars. You can put in brackets 7,500 gold uh, silver pieces. I'm keeping those paintings. We're not selling them. Mm -hmm. We may get to that discussion later, but he's just making a note of the, of the note. Um, and at this point, yeah, um, you see the mark of a caravan on the high road. Um, it is... Uh, Jan Kras. That's a fucking name, isn't it? Um... Jan Kras's trading caravan is the mark on the silver bars box. Um, the shipment uh, for the paintings doesn't contain any knowledge. And as you guys are able to assess that this is the end of this little area, um, uh, at this point, uh, I think we will take a moment. Um, let me just double check. Where is the stairs down? Taking a moment. Oh, I see. Um, okay, just here to the left are some stairs leading down to the next level. Oh, oh it wait, goes down? down? No, it goes up. It goes up. Um, Let's go up. To a different area? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Me too. Wouldn't that other staircase just be the lowest? Oh, one? I see. So the piece of information I missed is that at the very front, where you when you went into the yard, you actually descended to below street level. Um, so the stairs go up, oh. but they go up to street level. Ah. Right, okay. Because uh, okay, right. it, it, yes, it says upper level, street level, lower level, yard level. Very confusing. And that wasn't on the map that I was sharing. Um, uh, right, okay. Cool, but yes, we will take a short break there so our players have some time to level up. Be right back.
Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Forgotten Realms, our maxi campaign. Um, and at this point, as you are standing at the top of the stairs, uh, Renee turns to you all and... Hold. I, uh... You all look a little beaten up. Um, they haven't been up here since yesterday afternoon. I think the people who are responsible for up here are uh, these dead guards. I know it's a little grotty, but... Perhaps we should take some time before we go down. I can keep watch. And also, his voice has changed drastically in the break. I forgot how posh he was. Uh, I can keep watch if you'd like. Uh, uh you, you sure? He's suggesting a long rest. Your DM is suggesting I mean, a long rest. I mean, him being the watch. Oh, not... uh, very much. I'm not hurt in the slightest and have no need of rest. In fact, I've had almost nothing but rest for the last two days. That's okay. his voice. Well, I found it again. You... <laughs> uh, yeah, full if heads you, up. Uh, uh, if you don't take a long rest, I'm pretty sure you die in about ten minutes. <laughs> Has nothing to do with a long rest? Yeah, I yeah, could have yeah, done yeah. with a short rest, but if people want to take a long rest, that's also fine. Yeah. Mm. I like spell slots. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll long rest then. <laughs> yeah. You're going to like them too. <laughs> yeah, alright. Oh. Yeah, long rest it is. Oh, um, never mind. You can completely ignore everything that I've just said. <laughs> you can completely ignore everything I've just said. I've jumped ahead. That's absolutely fine. Okay, don't take a long... Well, take a long rest. It makes no fucking difference. Do what you like. Okay. Right, um, well, as you ascend the stairs, um, you will get to the other half of the... Oh, my fucking good Jesus bollocking shit fuck. <laughs> oh, what have you done? It won't move! You get up to the bloody second level. Somewhat. Right. Stay. Now it will yes. only move. Uh, you can take the long rest because you took it. It makes no difference. Okay, well, no, it does make a difference to me because I'm going to cast Goodberry before taking it. That's why it makes... Go it ahead. Makes cast Goodberry, out. take a long rest. Um, as you get up here, you notice that the open second level is stacked with crates where it overlooks the main warehouse. Um, if you search through these crates, you'll find all sorts of junk. Moth-eaten bolts of cloth, spoiled olive oil, hundreds of pairs of wooden-soled sandals. They were all the rage last summer, but are completely out of fashion now. Um, none of this junk appears to be in any way valuable. Um, you do, however, notice a couple of offices. If anybody needs one, you can take an ink pen and an ink well if you wish. Um, any of you. Um, and this upper floor contains a suite of offices that get little use by the Zentari. The rooms have desks, chairs, and bare shelves covered with dust and draped in cobwebs. Um, Kai, um, you turn around and notice that there is a rat hanging from the back of your cloak. A rat? Yes. It's, it's, they're fairly, it's fairly harmless, but uh, it's cute. Hello there. Mm. And um, it sort of appears to be a little panicked. What's wrong, little one? Um... The noise. The noise is unbearable. The what? The, the noise. Night? The noise. The noise. The noise. Okay. The noise is unbearable. What noise? The alarm. The alarm. Big noise. Where? Where? Now. Everywhere. Um, give me an insight check. Actually, I also need uh, your passive perception is a 17. I need a passive check. Uh, a passive check. I need a passive check, Moon. Fucking give me one. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how to do that. But I need a you. perception check. Yes, that's a nine on passive. <laughs> Is it? Excellent. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. I needed you to get one higher than your passive, and you did. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what I was looking exactly for. Exactly what I. Um, yeah. So uh, as you look around, you notice that there are some strange, unusual chimes above the door. Um, these are in the shape of a bell, but appear not to be ringing. However, the rat has told you they are ringing. You may use that insight check of yours uh, to determine that the noise is too high-pitched for any of your ears. Um, actually, tell a lie. Is anybody a full elf? You are. Yeah. It says anybody of full elf or beast nature, that'll be just Bellinor, I think, uh, will be able to hear this very faintly. Um, you may work out that that means somebody has arrived at the bottom of the warehouse. Somebody's come back. Um, also, if you, as you are looking around the offices, you do notice that on one of the tables is two paper birds. 
That's an actual DND Beyond item, Jamel, so take a note. Two paper birds. Can we, uh, or can I ascertain that these alarms can be heard by the people who run here or no? Or would I have no idea? Um, they probably link to somewhere else. Um, how yes, many of them are there? Um, how many bells? Yeah. Uh, four. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to break them. Okay. Um, how? They're metal. With my quarter staff. Try and knock them down. Oh, you can take them. Yeah, easily. Um, you don't even have to hit them particularly hard. You can just pry them off the wall. As you do so, the rat looks at you and, thank you, much relief. And you notice that they are connected to a series of wires. Um, if you follow these wires, they will lead you back to the front door. Um, but I, you can work that out without going down there. However, you do hear voices downstairs. Uh, a couple of gruff voices. Mm. Looks like there's been some trouble down here. I hope he's still alive. Maybe we should look for him. Do, uh, it's funny. Uh, it's taken so long for this disturbance. Apparently he's been missing for two days. Can't believe it. You hear loads of people talking downstairs. Um, and lots of noises and official noises. And you begin to hear some footsteps on the stairs. Everyone, hide. Prepare for ambush. Sorry, I nearly swallowed my cap of my can. Uh, no, no, no. Um, you notice very easily that this is the city guard. Um, oh. The city watch. And the man comes up the stairs. Um, he's a... Uh, Hello. He's very well armoured and a sword at his side. And... Oh, good day. Hi. Oh, Rainier. It's you. Very good. Uh, we took four Kenku into our custody earlier. Um, they appear to be a little worse for wear. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. Members of the Xanathar Guild. You've done well to take them out. Make of that Did you see the rest of the uh, mess up there? Down there, yes. Um, up, down, down, that was down. The yes, it, okay, very good. Um, yes, we, we, we saw that well. Uh, violent encounters between the two factions are becoming even ever more frequent. Did you happen um, to find a crossbow bolt on one of those Kenku? <laughs> um, well, uh, I, I can't say we looked. Um, I didn't search them myself. Um, look, uh, peace in the dock ward is important to me. Um, I'm sure that, I'm sure that you know that. Um, I, uh, I was surveilling this warehouse for quite a while, but. We pulled a detail to bolster the patrols throughout the dock ward. It's a decision I regret now. Regardless, I'm going to move this so that I can stop looking to my right. I'm getting a stiff neck. Um, sorry. Um, right. After all, if uh, Xanathar Guild and the Zentarium want to destroy each other, why not let them? But uh, we've been trying to catch this Zent instigator, uh, Erstal Floxin. Uh, he's a bit of a big fish. He's, I think he's responsible for a lot of the strife recently. Um... That's that name. Um, he looks over to uh, Rainier and... You're right there. You look like you could do with a bath. Oh, yes, I'm quite well, thank you. Um, and, uh, Captain Stagget. Uh, well, um, it's uh, good of you to turn up, even if you're a little late for the rescue. Oh, we're not here on your behalf. Uh, we just came to... Because we heard of the disturbance. But... Glad to see you're all right. We're also not here for him. Oh? We came, but he isn't here anymore. Who did you come for? Floon? What's his name? Oh, yeah. yeah. Name Rumors are missing. It's best not to meddle in criminal matters. You should leave this dirty business to the City Watch. Not all the City Watchers are officers. Is, are, ah, blah. Not all City Watch officers are as nice as me. Get the blood off the streets, yeah? Um, you've heard this phrase, keep the blood off the streets, a lot before, and you're more, you're aware that what it means is we care about what happens in the city and pay no attention to what happens in the sewers below, where a lot of trouble happens. Great. Yeah. I don't suppose you saw anything that could help us find our friend, or... Yeah. Well. Um, out of the back alley, um, some people were seen, uh, dragging someone down there, um... A few days ago, we don't go down to the sewers. The city guard don't bother down there. Um, but there's a, there's a cover at the back. You can head down the ladder. Great. 
That is more than helpful enough. Rumors are it's Renea that they took, but, well, it would seem that that's yeah, not the case. Or so they thought. Oh, no, they uh, they mistook a young floon for me. Oh, well, that idiot's not going to be a big loss. <laughs> oh, well, money to us is, it would be a big loss in money to us. Well, you're more than welcome to go down there on your own, but City Watch won't come for you if you're down in the sewers. That's fine. Hmm. A lot of good help you were here anyways. Thanks. Um, just to qualify, by the way, I don't think I told you, Salty, Rhaenyra is a half-elf. His father is Dagoth Neverember, but his mother is an elf. Um, you don't know the nature of her backstory. It, that's very relevant later on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, you can, uh, you can check out back if you want. Uh, as I said, uh, there's a cover. There's a ladder down to the sewers there. Wish you the best of luck, but... <sighs> you need to look a bit of a mess right now. Anyway. My pleasure working with you. Mm, and you too. This uh, building will now be under the possession of the City Watch. Um, though, you may take the spoils of your fights. Yes, the paintings by the door, those are ours. Oh. Um, uh, Rana, Rana sort of realizes what you're getting at. and Yes, yes, they belong to my family. Um, they were taken with me. I would like to get them back to, our, uh, to my home. Uh, these lovely people have offered to help me with that. Yeah, what do you and say? the officer sort of very well, very well, um, and he will also help you with your fifteen silver bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and he looks to you and uh, perhaps we should uh, go and get ourselves a drink. I have a room over the road at the uh, Skewered Dragon. Uh, people will treat you a little better if I'm with you, um, if you wish. And that is where you may take your long rest. And uh, by the way, you'll need it or you'll die, and you've already taken it, so you better fucking say yes. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, I don't no, want yes. Let's go. <laughs> yep. I refuse. That's okay. If you don't rest, I'll set you back to level one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, just... Okay. I'll, I'll end you. Um. Yeah. And at this point, uh, you may head over to the Skewer Dragon. They give you suspicious looks at first, but when they see Rainier, they sort of nod, and uh, Rainier will tell you uh, they don't like that I'm a snoot little, uh, snoot little fellow, but they do like that I've managed to get them left alone by. So the people that caused him trouble, I do have some connections left with my father, though we haven't spoken in many years. Um, well, anyway, um, perhaps we should get ourselves some rest. And uh, for now, if you wish to use this as a little bit of a, a base, uh, keep your stuff, that's fine. Um, are you okay with me coming down into the sewers with you to track a floon? Absolutely. Right, Please very, join us. Very much like to assist. Um, I feel I, like we'll need the extra pair of hands. Yes, and I feel like the DM will enjoy trying to change the XP numbers. Um, <laughs> I hope these numbers are multipliable by four and divisible by five. Um, they should be. Um, well, best we uh, best we take our rest. And at this point, uh, you will take a long rest, yada yada. And um, you'll wake up about half past two in the morning. Um, at which point, uh, he sort of starts nudging you all and... If we're going to set off, uh, the middle of the night is usually the best time to interrupt thieves' businesses. Uh, if they're going to be moving him, or, you know, uh, if there is signs of the thieves to be found, um, night is the best time for it, as far as I know. All right. Uh, the bartender, as you come down, will sort of look you all over and look like you're headed out on business. Like I business, I call it that. I've got some useful stuff that you might want if you want to purchase it off the books. I'm ears. things. Um, he will sell you healing potions at fifty gold. Vials of acid at twenty gold, um, and basic poisons at a hundred gold. And if anybody wants any of those. None of those are of interest to me personally. Anybody want a healing potion? 50 gold, 50 gold, 50 gold, healing potion, potion, 50 gold, 50 gold, healing potion. Uh, wait, I don't have, I don't have 50 gold. <laughs> um, yeah, no, technically you here. have the silver ingots. You could offer yeah. him one silver ingot for a potion if you wish. It will drop the, drop the amount of 
silver that they're worth by 500 each. Does anybody want healing potions? Jamal, do you want to just make a straight exchange for some healing potions? Uh, yeah, I'll do a straight exchange for bar okay. potion. Then. Um, so well, do, do, do you want to swap five for five healing potions? Then you can just carry those around for now. Would sure. that work for you guys? Then, because that'll last you as long as you need. So that's uh, 5,000 SP left of bars. Uh, which is 10, 10 silver trade bars. I want my money. Give me my money. I've also put my money in already. What have you put in? What? Huh? 1,875 silver pieces. Oh. Because okay. that is split as one of the split ways. Okay. Yeah, if you're doing it that way, then that's fine. Uh, Jamal, you can just trade in one. Um, that's. Uh, uh, do you know what? That's so fucking confusing now. Um, yeah. I'll in future, can you one. please split the stuff at the end of the session, not in the session? Um, yeah. Because that's bizarre. Yeah, um, I can take it out. Yeah, but take, it's take that you Just assume we would all spend the money the same way too. Um, I don't. Especially you a, don't have any money. Give good berries there, yeah, but you don't right now have any money. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. If you want to leave the potions behind, Jamal, you can swap for one if you want. Um, but uh, yes. Um, right no, now you don't right, have I'll any wait on the good okay, now that cool. it's been mentioned. Yeah, good berries is absolutely fine. Uh, but it's just that you don't uh, right now. You don't have any money. They are worth that, but you'd need to sell them for them to be worth that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is my point. Um, that's, yeah, that's why splitting them was weird. Uh, yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, so at this point, uh, he says, "Well, best of luck and have a good night." Um, and uh, sort of Renier emerges. Uh, he is wearing some leather armor. Um, I think that will still keep his armor class at eleven. Um, and he's polished and cleaned up. Um, and it's looking a lot better. He's at 14, by the way. That's what it is. Oh, he's like. had some studded leather armor. How exciting. Lucky him. Uh, <laughs> uh, Can I yeah. make a trade with him? No. <laughs> um, he's, yeah, he's got his armor. He's got a, the same short sword and dagger, but they're looking uh, a little finer, a little polished. Um, and he's cleaned up. I mean, well, are we to go? Okay. Let us embark. Okay. Um, at this moment, uh, you are able to head out to the back of the... I didn't mean to do that. Um, you are able to head out to the back of the, um, warehouse. Um, and... Ah! Oh, it's starting soon. <laughs> Oops. Um, and, uh, yeah, you notice the, uh, way down to the sewers. Um, they're dark, but as you all have dark vision... Um, you won't necessarily need any light sources to see. There are cracks in various uh, areas that lead up to the outside. Um, as you get down there, a putrid stream flows along the sewer tunnel. which leads in both directions. In one direction, you see a tiny little symbol drawn on the wall in yellow chalk. It is a palm-sized circle with ten equidistant spokes radiating out from its circumference. You know this to be the mark of the Xanathar Guild. And you know that the Xanathar Guild have snatched Floon, right? So. Yeah, we're heading in the right direction. Okay, as you head on through the sewers, you're able to follow a series of these. And um, eventually, after about an hour of following signs through the tunnels, you come to a three-way intersection where a ladder leads up into a stone shaft, kept by a circular metal cover. One of the familiar chalk symbols is marked on a wall nearby, floating near the symbol. It's a spherical grape-sized fruit, grape-sized, grape-fruit-sized creature with a bulging central eye and four stumpy little eye stalks. As you get oh. close, it goes <laughs> at you. And uh, it will ask you um, to just give it a second while uh, the DM does something before rolling your initiative. Very weird thing to request of me, little spiky eyeball. But I guess. <laughs> yeah. What a strange um, creature that is. How does he know about our omnipotent god? I know. But no, he does. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, initiative, please. Yes, we are waiting for your husband to come back, I think. Oh, wait. What did that do I fuck off to? Damn, these are some good initiative rolls today. Hello, husband. Um, sound issues from someone? Josh? 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 
Are you with us? I. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Well, your camera's off, and uh, yeah. Um, I'm missing Thornum's initiative. My Discord's having issues. Okay, I'm missing Thornum's initiative. Yeah, I'm rolling it now. Okay. Oh, fancy that. Okay. Um, as you round the corner, um, hold on, let me click that. Um, here we go. Uh, we have number three and number four. Um, and, uh, the first one I will ask, um, Fornum to make a deck save. And the second one I will ask, um, We have a what or a what? I can't see anything. Fornum, make a deck <laughs> save, please. Um, sure. and, uh, Bellinor, make a wisdom save, please. 17 deck save. Okay. 13 um, on my wisdom. Okay, you see a beam of cold energy fly towards you, uh, Thornum, but you step out the way quite easily. Uh, 14 on the wisdom save. Um, yes. you, uh, feel a little transfixed by the swaying of this gazer. Uh, you'll have disadvantage on your next attack and your movement speed is halved. Is that... Bell charm uh yeah i guess sort of maybe why not okay that's a 15 that makes absolutely no fucking difference please refer All to right, my cool. previous sentence bellinor it's your turn <laughs> i'm not gonna give you a battle map it's a small little okay. grapefruit sized creature that's about three foot away from you all right and i'm Go assuming my it. extra goes on the same terms as me correct uh no he's meant to have Wait, his own initiative roll. 20 uh, but that's fine. I, I rolled a 22, uh, and I have a higher dex than you. Wait, was that a nat 20 for you? Uh, yeah. No, it's uh, it's fine. Just, just go, oh, okay. Bellinor. Right, Bellinor, just go. Uh, I don't care enough about this fight if you haven't got that. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, um, I, I, I guess I'll... How far away am I? Three foot. Three foot? I guess Three. I'll swing at him with my rapier. Excellent. Uh, do so at disadvantage. You're charmed. Okay. I just rolled off of my sheet. That's insane. That is a 14 to hit. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. All right. Um, there it is. Four, seven damage. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Thornum, you're up. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to split it in two with the Great Axe. Okay, um, it's a little small, but hitting it with a Great Axe is something you can achieve just about. Um, as you swing and you catch it with the edge of the uh, axe, bumping it into the ceiling where it then drops upon the ground. Please roll damage for me. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, 16. Yeah. Um, you didn't quite catch it clean, but you hit it so hard that it just starts bouncing off the walls like a tennis ball. Um, and uh, alas, it drops to the ground. Um, you notice it has a small little key clutched in its hand. Okay, uh, let's grab that key then. Okay, um, as you uh, look up to uh, the corridor where the chalk symbol is located, um, by all means follow uh, the tunnel down. If you were to climb the ladder and have a little look inside the uh, where this grate leads to, you'll find yourselves in the cellar of the Spouting Fish, which is a tavern in the Dockward. Oh. Okay. Um... And then, uh, yeah, uh, as you get to the end of this corridor, um, you see uh, that um, there is a sort of very uh, thick iron grated door with a sliding um, peephole that appears to be operated from the other side. Um, and there is a lovely keyhole uh, in the front. Um, uh, I will sweep my way, hand the key to Blake, and ask him to please open the door for us. Okay. Um, as you guys head down this uh, corridor, um, I just like a dex check out of our dwarf, whose name is not in brackets after his name. Thornum. Yes. Dex check, please. Dex check. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a 17. Fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah, so you guys didn't make too much noise heading down here. As you approach the door quietly, and Blake, uh, you're able to open the door, if you wish. Yes? Um, I'm confused. Are you? 
Yeah. Why? I don't get why if Bellinor had the key, why he can't open the door. Um, maybe he thought you might be quieter? Also, oh, if it was a dex check, you would have a better chance. Oh, I see. Check. So I'm the scapegoat. <laughs> Um, that's fine. I will walk up to said door mm -hmm. and, uh, Cameras are fucked. unlock it with the key. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that's fine. Um, and as you enter in, um, I just need to work out which side you enter from for me a second, please. Josh, you can turn your camera back on. When I try, it just loads. Like, yeah. My Discord's having issues. Uh, restart Discord, maybe? I did. You did? Oh, fuck it Okay. That's, that's where I disappeared. Oh. I'm so confused. Okay, that's fine. Right, that, that is fine. Um, no, I'm no longer confused. Okay, um, the cameras are fucked, but alas, we must transition, because uh, this is relevant. Uh -huh. um, so, as you get to the end of this long corridor, uh, you begin to slog down through this slushy water. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, it's about a foot deep of water and sewage. Um... And the main tunnel finally expands into a circular hub. You see a pair of arrow slits carved into the outer walls, directly across from each of the other two. A stone door is set into the back wall, a stone ledge to the west. Um, a perception check, please, as you look around the room. Kai. At 20 for 27. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, at that point, you will notice that there is also uh, an unusual door mechanism in the south. Um, it uh, appears to be rushing water, but you realize that uh, you can actually open a door from behind it. You will get wet going through it, but um, you can see it. I head over to it. Uh, yeah, it leads to a long corridor going. Small corridor going. Hold on. Right. Um, it's not letting me grab things. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I see. It's just you cut off mid sentence. I was like. Yeah, because I can't focus on on it when it stops working. I can only do it when it's working in the first place. Um, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, no, I, was, okay. I just thought uh, DC'd for a second and I was like, no, what the f- um, you look to a long, long corridor down to the south. Uh, can I see anything down there? Nope. It's black or...? No, I mean, it's just uh, just a long corridor going south. It looks exactly like there. the long corridor to your east. Um, there may be a door off it at some point, but you wouldn't be able to see it without walking down. I did everyone else come into the wall. Me, or did I go by myself? I, I didn't think you walked down it. I thought you just looked down it. Oh, yeah, I just looked down it. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as you... Like there's nothing down here, guys. Yeah. However, you guys have noticed the two arrow slits on the walls, yeah? Um, so you're in this central hub, and you notice arrow slits either side, northwest and southeast. Right. Okay. So that would imply there's... Uh possibility that people could be behind it at some point. Okay. Oops, that's not the music I was looking for. Hang on a second. Expert oh, traps, awesome. maybe? Down the hallway? Uh, yeah, you can um, have a look around here, but uh, it, it's pretty obvious to you pretty quickly that um, 
these are tunnels used regularly. They're not going to be trapped because it would um, endanger the people who use these on a regular basis. All right, then I guess check for any sort of doors or anything at all. Okay, um, the longer you wait in this room, uh, the more likely it is you're going to get shot through an arrow hole. Oh, I'm going to walk Once down again. the corridor. And oh, you're going to walk down to the thing. south? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, you are able to head down to the south. Um, and after a long walk down, you do notice that there is a um, narrow passage on the right that seems to be leading somewhat upwards. Um, it's It'll be a squeeze for any of you. Um, but you can head down there if you wish. I will go third in marching order. You want to head down the corridor? I would love to. If anybody else would like to. Same. Right, in that case, I'll be heading up the front then. Okay. Um, Thornham, as you get to the front door, um, uh, you've gone sort of up here. Uh, you open the door and you see a uh, small halfling um, surrounded by three other halflings. Um, he appears to sort of twitch at you and look at you. Well, uh, where did you come from? You come from the sewers? Are you part of the Zanthar Guild? I just give him a nod. Mm. You don't look like the regular kind of Xanthar and Guilty kind of people. Ha. Huh. Mm. And, uh. Hired hands. Well, the Kanek is a here. And he'll start speaking to you in Thieves' Count. Look at him quizzically. Like, not clearly not understanding a word he just fucking said. I just say. Hired hands. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look at my, my associate that is following behind me, and I'll look at him like, what did you, what did you just say? Ain't none of you gonna speak these, Count. Um, no, but my extra, who's a rogue? Uh, he looks at you. Only... Oh. oh, got that one. Um, and then, uh, he sort of looks at you and... Yeah, hired hands, I think not. Um, uh, well... You see, we, we don't really like the Xanathar kill all that much, but, uh, well, you know, uh, if you're causing trouble for them, then maybe I need to let them know. Unless, uh, unless there's something in it for me. Uh... We're not mm. causing trouble to the Xanathar guild. Mm. What is this guy again? Grace? He looks like a halfling. We're just here to uh, to find a friend. Uh, it, we're not here to cause any trouble. We're just uh, looking for somebody. <laughs> he appears to be sniffing very hard, and then suddenly you'll see fur begin to sprout from him. And I will ask you to bear with me a second. He is going to attack. Yeah, no deception, my lord. Um, no, unfortunately, there is something that has given you guys away, but as to what it is, you don't know yet. Um, ah, oh, bugger me, all the cameras are... F do you know what, we're going to do this in roleplay mode. Um, right. Yep, sorry. Uh, Josh's lack of camera is crippling the, uh, stream. Nah, it's okay. Do you want me to sort out music or some shit? No. Okay. I just need to wait until it loads so I can click the button and run. Right. And no, I don't want to resume the anchor. Fuck me. <coughs> you want me to roll initiative for him? Or are you going to roll initiative for him? I want this to load. That's all I want. No, I want you to roll initiative for him, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and roll initiative. Uh... Jesus, man, I'm killing it today. Um, and my extras initiative is 15. Uh, in response to your previous question, Jamal, you'll, it normally does. The, Sorry? Uh, that 20 does normally lead the initiative. I just, uh, I didn't care enough about something that had 13 no, XP. No, uh, that's fair enough. Oh, by the way, I'm here. really sorry. You all killed that little dude and you gained 10 XP. Um, oh, okay. So that's two each. That's cute. Um, the, uh, Rainier initiative, please. 15. 15. 15. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh my god, this is a fucking nightmare. 
Sorry, guys. I know that's deafening. Thanks. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. And uh, you will see fur begin to sprout through his body um, as he <coughs> breaks out in a strange motion. The snout of a rat forms at his face. He pulls a dagger out at each side. I smell noble. Oh, yikes. And with that, <laughs> um, he... Noble? Yes. Um, That'd be me. No, it's Renair. Yeah, oh, I'm also noble. <laughs> yes, but it's Renair that he is uh, he is most uninterested in. Um, and with that, he will lead up and he will take a quick slash at Thornum. Um, that's a 20 to hit. That does it. Okay, you take four damage. Make a con save. Uh, that's uh, thirteen. Okay, cool. Um, and and is then... that poison or no? Um, no okay. And then he shall take a slash with his short sword at you. That's a twenty-one to hit. Good God. Okay. That's seven slashing damage. <coughs> okay. Okay, cool. Okay, this fucker's head. Uh, Bellador, you're up. Um, I'm assuming with our our book of guides to monsters, I have a general understanding of uh, what I'm facing right now. Give me a nature check with advantage. Oh, thank God for advantage. That is a seven. No. Uh, you understand this is some kind of rat creature. Some sort of rat creature. Fan fantastic. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to, uh... Fuck it, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot at it with my crossbow. Okay. Roll to hit. That is a 11. Uh-huh. And seeing as how my crossbow bolt has managed to miss, I have gained no information. And yeah. I will look at my dear friend Thornum, and I'll say, Hey, good job. But then I'll look at Kai, and I'll say, Please help. And then consider yourself inspired, Kai. Oh boy. Kai, you're up. Um, please help, he says. Uh, is this like a hallway where he can only hit the person in front? No, it's an open room. Okay. I'm going to do something, I think. If I could open my spell list, that'd be great. I'm going to Guiding Bolt him. Mm -hmm. There's a 22 to hit. Can't do it. Oh, he's not going to like that 17 damage. Oh, magic. Green Bolt of Lightning zaps out of my finger. Green hisses at you. Magics, dirty magics. Yeah, not dirtier than you, sir. And uh, will that conclude your turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Thornum, you're up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna um absolutely cave this fucker's head in with the mole. I'm gonna oh, swing yeah. straight down on him. Um, yeah. I do not like the fact that he just fucked me up that hard. Mhm. Mm Roll of advantage, you say? Yeah, guiding bolted him. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a net 20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's 20 damage. Uh, no, it's not. Um, as your axe hits him, uh, you notice it sort of ripples. Uh, mole, sorry, ripples, and it falls to the ground beside him. Um, unfortunately, it is uh, not of magical nature. Um, this strange creature seems to be immune to it. Well, I'm doing fucking nothing, guys. Um, yeah. Um, you can roll with the short sword uh, on um, our lovely friend. He will have an 18 to do nothing. No, he will have an 18 to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Yes, I will. Uh, he is going to uh, do 3 damage. No sneak attack? Does he not have sneak attack yet? Uh, it does not say sneak attack, no. Yeah, it just says action, short sword. Oh, you get helpful, well, don't you? Tools. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, but you see that his sword strikes and leaves blood in its uh, in its wake, and uh, he turns to you, uh, 
Thornaman there. You should go about getting that axe silvered. Most helpful. Um, mole, whatever it is you swung with. Um, Blake, you're up. Okay. Blake? Lock it. Well, sorry? You're up! You're up. Turn! Oh, sorry. Um, so, I am gonna take out, um, one of my arrows from my quiver that's got, you know, the feather at the end? Mm hmm Yeah, it's like black. Um, and I am gonna shoot at the guy with the sword. Okay. Roll okay. to hit. Uh, that is a 16 to hit. Roll hit. Okay. Um... Uh, that's gonna do seven damage uh, as it hits it like it leaves like um a mark on his on his collarbone where it hit dealing an extra three damage for favored foe and then hunter's mark is what is six which is uh extra two damage josh you didn't pay any attention to the previous sentence did you um oh, as your arrow strikes it does nothing um, what? falling to the side of the monster as uh, it doesn't appear that your arrow is magical in nature and therefore he is immune to it. I did tell you this. Um, however, your uh, the black mark of your hunter's mark um, does flare up upon him. Uh, don't use your favourite foe here. Uh, you can take that usage back. Um, but uh, the hunter's mark flares up and that damage will trigger but the arrow itself uh, doesn't appear to find purchase on him. So I can't do anything in this combat. Uh, you can we'll use Hunter's it. Mark and proc that, which you have done, but everything else, no. So you're telling me I can only do 1d6 damage every time? That's a lot better than our lovely dwarf who can do 0d0. Zero zero. Okay. Cool. Um, the rat sort of... If hisses. by any chance does my um, egg hatch, because <laughs> no. that could really help. No. Um, he hisses... <laughs> Magics. Um, and he will slash twice at our magic friend. Um, that's a f 10 and an 18 to hit you, Kai. One hits. Yep, figures. Um, that is six slashing damage as he slashes at you, but you do not need to make a con save as he failed his bite. Uh, and that concludes his turn. Bellano, you're up. Having uh, discovered things and such. How's our rat friend looking after getting smacked oh, by the guiding Oh, fuck. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna call him a smelly little shit. Yeah. Yes, he is. He would agree with you. Give me your damage. That is going to be four damage. Oh! As you mock him, he reels to the ground and he reverts back into halfling form before choking up a furball and dying slowly on the floor in front of you. Um, he was a smelly little shit. He was a smelly little shit. Um, yeah, those of you who are interested, there is a short sword plus one on the ground. Can uh, I do one more thing real quick while yeah. I'm here? Mm -hmm. Can I attempt and see if this works? I want to take them all and swing it down on the head, down on his head now that he's transformed. Does it harm him at all, or can I just smash his skull no, in? No, it with moves it? to the side. I don't, okay. You can't actually land a purchased blow on this creature at all. Can't even get my revenge skull caving in. I mean, you wow. could pick up his short sword. You know what? Yeah, I am going to do that just for the just for the hell of it. I'm going to pick up my short sword and just absolutely cleave him in two with it. Yeah, as you pick up his short sword, it's a short sword plus one. Bear in mind, plus one weapons aren't necessarily magical, uh, but you will notice that this sword does have silver painted upon it. Um, okay. And that will allow you to blow to to rain blows upon him. As you are doing so, you're making a hell of a lot of noise. Um, and somebody comes down, um, a small halfling, and, uh, huh, seems we've got a downstairs entrance. Um, well, what have you done with Roscoe there? That's, Roscoe? Uh, yeah, Roscoe he under us? Roscoe Underbell. He was our guard. What do you think you're doing? Anyway, Why well. Why hit us first? Yeah, fucker attacked me. He said I voice. smell. And then he swung at my friend here. Interestingly, coming from a shard shunner. That's a... That's a phrase. He's not really in a place to tell anyone they smell. Well, anyway. Um, you look like you need a bath. You want to come up and take a bath? Um, 
I'll put a meal on for you. Nah, nah, I'm no, good. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. We're just here for one. We're just here for uh, You do seem to be in the up. basement of my fine establishment. You're aware, yes. Ah. Oh. oh. I should say, indeed, welcome. You're the proprietor. Uh, welcome to the uh, to the hostel. Um, uh, we are. Um, I do have a name for this. The Splintered Oak. Um, it is the Splintered Oak uh, Hostel. Um, we uh, like to make sure that everybody's nice and welcome here. We have fabulous bathhouses and uh, an excellent restaurant, if I do say so myself. Um, if you wish hmm. to take meal and repast, you're more than welcome to, even if you have climbed up through my cellar. Hold on, what kind of hostel has bathhouses? Um, this one. Um, it's it's, it's a little luxurious. <gasps> Hi, friends. You've convinced me. I uh, I could always go for a nice, luxurious bath. Wow, please do. Um, don't mind smelling better than the sewers. Indeed. Uh, enjoy. And with that, uh, you can take a long bath and are fed a wonderful meal by a bunch of halflings. But after a little while, you may take a short rest, by the way. Um, after Do we also happen to get 550 AXP. <laughs> no. Um, you do, however, get 90 each. 90 EXP, you say? Yeah. Uh, for defeating Aye. Roscoe Underbow. Um, can I, um, I, when I get in the bath, I would like to, um, did you say 90? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, I would like to take my dragon egg um, out of my satchel, and I'd like to place it in the water with Oh me. my fucking god, Harry Potter. <laughs> um, sorry, I... You're taking I realize one... in Harry Potter that's not a, a dragon egg, right? <laughs> uh, you're putting the dragon egg in the bath with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you notice that it gets a little warm. Um, and tremors slightly, but otherwise doesn't seem to react. I don't want it to react. I just want to scrub it. Oh, okay. You're getting it nice and clean, are you? Beautiful. Uh, it shines. Um, it's, it's... I, it will be, I, I was thinking it would be like having a massage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it shines. It's, it's black, but it's, uh, it's now polished to a sheen. Um, however, as you are all luxuriating within the baths and taking your time to enjoy a meal. Uh, the halfling you met comes up to you and... I didn't introduce myself. My name's Conrad. Um, your friend that you met downstairs, Roscoe. Um, he's a member of the Shard Runners. Uh, Shard Shunners, sorry. Um, they're a group of were that have an uneasy truce with the Xanathar Guild. Um, it won't be long before one of them arrives uh, for his usual evening meal. I suggest you make yourself scarce before that happens. I do hope you've enjoyed your stay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, your wonderful baths and your luxurious food. My pleasure. Always willing to serve. Hmm. Always willing to be served. And the Lady Dana, Dana, sorry, sends her regards. Yeah. Um, Interesting place. The Lady Dana, Dana is the uh, owner of this place. Uh, she owns a few like these. Regardless. Hmm. At this point, uh, let's just take us back to the map play briefly. Um, you are able to, uh, you've now cleaned out this area and you're able to establish and ascertain that it doesn't matter how much further you are to go south along this path, it will just keep going. Okay. Um, and you've cleaned out the cellar of the uh, cracked oak. Uh, in. That's a uh, very interesting place right there. It's a very fine establishment. Yeah, how are your, how were your baths? Um, fairly soothing, fairly soothing. Managed to um, definitely tend to some of those wounds from that rat 
bastard thing. Yes. Hopefully we've all learned that when something starts to grow fur that didn't originally have it, maybe we avoid using non-silvered weapons, yes? That was unexpected, if I must... Well, I've certainly honest, never yeah. needed... I've certainly never needed to, uh, tip the weapons in silver before, so that's a, um... That's a new one. Well, yes, it is most effective against those of werewolf and were-rat and other were-creatures. Um, it is also quite effective against the undead. Um, do recommend it. I have a friend who does it. He can do it on the cheap for you if you'd like. Uh, noted, noted. Now, uh, on to other matters. This um, sword that I scooped up to mm -hmm. um, massacre that uh, bastard with. Mm -hmm. Anyone has any interest in taking one of these? No. I have no real use for it. Blake, do you want a short sword that's capable of hitting werewolves and shit? And plus one. Wait, what? Do you want a plus one short sword that's capable of hitting werewolves and other creatures like that? Not particularly. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll keep it then. It's not really my particular weapon of choice as a first weapon, but I'll have it as no. a good backup. No, indeed, but uh, I think it's uh, useful in this situation. Oh, well and truly. Okay, uh, you return back to the original room with the uh, arrow slits within it. You see a door to your left. You know that this is the only place you haven't been yet. Do you wish to go that way? Why not? Well, let's, let's go that way. Okay. Uh, you see a small corridor that jinks uh, right and left. Um, it doesn't appear to be trapped or um, particularly uh, well watched over. Um, and you notice it opens up into... Um, you Sorry, you see a door at the end of the corridor that uh, is a little ajar. Um, and uh, you're able to push it open if you wish. Uh, I push it open a little bit and peek my head and check and see if there's anything to be seen. Okay, as you look to the left... Um, you see a room that has uh, appears to have a lot of clutter um, on the ground. Um, as you look to the right, you see a corridor that goes around the corner, but not much else. Um, yeah. You also see, uh, as you peek your head around to the right, the beginnings of what looks to be a slightly lit room with flickering candlelight. Uh, I, I figure we just go in, then you guys think so? Yeah, I was planning to go in. Right or left? Yeah. Uh, let's go left first and look okay. at the clutter. Uh, yeah, you see a room filled with rusty weapons and threadbare clothing. Um, it looks like it might be a coat room, an armory of some sort. None of these weapons appear particularly useful or valuable. Um, if you wish to give me an insight check, um, Thornum, please. Regular insight? As opposed to irregular insight? Well, with advantage would be the alternative. But yeah, sure. No. Yes, please, please consider yourself helped. Um, by my no, friend. that's that's not possible. Um, okay. So whilst whilst he's capable of taking the help action at any point, bear in mind you can only give the help action if a you are proficient in the skill, or b it, you can explain role playing wise how he would assist. Um, however, in this right. situation, um, what did you get? Sorry, Jamil. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, that's funnily enough. Um, you see that these weapons. Um, you know, you've seen dwarves build weapons of various different races. These weapons appear to be built for a small race. Um, in fact, most of them would be quite easy for Kai to manage. Um, you can assume that this is either halflings or goblins or some other form of small creature. Small folk of some kind. Yes. Gnomes. Yeah. All those things. Ignores my race. Oh, I said. I said it would be a weapon that was perfect for Kai to oh. wield. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, make of that what you will. Other than that, uh, yes. There, what kind of weapon was it? Uh, there's loads of them on the floor. They're all rusted to shit. Oh, and just pretty useless. Okay. Um, it seems oh. to be where things are discarded, this room. So old toot and discarded junk weapons. Mm. Small folk weapons like that. Yep. I recommend Thornton lead the way to the right. What would be straight at this point. Uh, I shall indeed, and I'll, I'll make sure at this point, considering the um, previous encounter and the um, potential, really, for more of those bastards, I'll uh, have my short sword at the ready rather than my okay. regular weapons. Um, with your short sword at the ready, are you attempting to sort of um, 
make your way quietly, or are you just attempting to sort of bop along the corridor and be ready to smack a bitch? Uh, I'll try quietly. Okay. Make it's not going to go too check well, but I'll give it a shot. You want to do a group check since we're no. all going? No. I do not. Uh, yeah, that's five. Cool. Okay, as you get around the corner, um, you see a goblin sort of step out of his chair, looks up and... Oh my! Uh, wow! Who, uh, who are you? Uh, I will immediately charge the goblin and try to grapple him. Okay, he will put his arms up in surrender and... Well, no need to be violent. Uh, we were attacked down here just now. Couldn't take any chances. Yeah, well, this goblin doesn't like his chances with you. Go on, go <laughs> past. I won't say a thing. I'm, I'm going to speak in goblin to him. Mm -hmm. um, because all my characters can't. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say to him, um, what are you doing here? I'm a lookout. Paid down here to watch. Let them know if people come. But, uh, well. Let who know? The boss. Who's the boss? Please don't play the pronoun game with me. Um, yeah, don't worry. I'll tell you in a minute. The guy. The person. Yeah, Grimshaw. The guy with the name. Hey, Heather. Grimshar! So should I know that name? I'm, I'm saying that out of character. No. Should I know that No, not at all. Okay. Uh, you'd recognise it to be an orcish name of some sort. Um, what's his business here? Uh, Grimshar's the boss! The boss. Great. Um, this goblin's an idiot. You may... That's fine. ...interact that's with fine. it as much as you wish, but, uh... It, uh... Yes, it's an idiot. Okay, that's, that's fine. He's, I, I'm um, just making it clear that he's not trying to avoid your uh, questions. He just uh, he doesn't know. Yeah. really know all that much. No. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, what um, What's it going to take for you to not tell anyone that we came nothing, past Nothing! Nothing! Won't tell a thing! Won't tell a soul! Do you promise? D don't want to die! Okay, what if I give you a gift? Why gift? I don't want to die. Won't say a thing. So, so that we, um, so that we can, you know, shake hands on this. Shaking hands? Yeah, but with a gift. He sort of looks down to his hands, and then he sort of looks up at you, and looks down at you, and then he, he sort of stands there and goes... <laughs> and shakes his hands. Um... <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I, just, would love, I, I would look love at Blake. This is really productive, isn't it, Blake? Yeah. Um, I would love to know what you just did, but this is what my screen looks like right now. I don't know what oh this God. means. God, that was funny. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh my God, what the fuck is going on with your PC? Oh my God. Okay, well, regardless, he's he's just shaking his hands in front of him, like he's clapping without putting them together. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna give him my um, spice pouch. Achoo! He sort of lets go of it and ah, what? It, it, it's a sneezing box. Was it a sneezing bag? I'm not sure. Is it a bag or a box? It's a bag. Pouch. A pouch. Sorry. Yes. Okay. A sneezing bag. I don't, don't want to sneeze. Don't like sneeze. Why did he sneeze? Because he sniffed into your pouch. Into your spice pouch. But that's not how the pouch works. What? I don't wait, know wait. what it is you're trying to give away. Who gave me the item? <laughs> yes, yes, I keep track of all 6,750 well, items. Basically, like... you reach into the pouch, take a pinch, and you can either, it'll either be a pinch of salt or pepper or saffron or um, cilantro. Yeah, well, he took a massive sniff. That. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Down he goes. Uh, okay, okay. To assist him, I'm going to reach into my satchel and pull out a magnifying glass so he can play with that. This is, here, how about this? Um, he'll on, hold I... it up. Hey, you're getting bigger! <laughs> I think I've come to the conclusion that he doesn't, he's not going to tell us, and he also has no fucking idea. Big. What's going on? 
I, th I think we just. Uh, I'm quite aware that he has no idea what's going on. But so really why, why are we handing something. him things? Oh well, uh, well, this is the thing I can make as many times as I want. So. Uh, hell, I'll look at the goblin and say, if you really want to be impressed, you see my cloak <laughs> now, and then I'll turn purple like it did for the <laughs> shopkeeper, and then I'll turn it back like magic. <laughs> now, can are you no, able to tell seen us? it? No. I don't All want right, to die. Cool. All right, guys. <laughs> it's good enough for me. <laughs> oh, guys, I don't think he's gonna Watch out for the dwarf. Thank you, Thank you for your dwarf? help. Watch out for the dwarf. Yeah, Thorum. Down the corridor on the right. Watch out for the dwarf. No, he's warning you about a right. dwarf. All right. Oh, Nasty bugger. Thanks. Invisible. It's got dirty poisons. Hmm. hmm. Thanks for the heads up. He said this... down the hallway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah down the hallway. <coughs> okay. On hearing dwarf rather than um, the shit that we fought before, I will um, swap to having my great axe at the ready instead. Okay. We're dwarf. <laughs> shit, I watch as that fucking happens, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you head down the corridor. Um, you get to here, and you can see into what appears to be an empty sleeping area. This room contains six tattered straw-stuffed mattresses. Nothing else of much value. Um, you can hear the sounds of activity um, on the other side of the door. Uh, yeah, I think we're all on the lookout for an invisible person in this room. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely fine. You don't see an invisible person in here. He Maybe you can work out that perhaps it's not this room. Um, yeah. and, uh, you hear the other side of the room, a voice that you recognize, saying, it doesn't work like that. Plug the gap at the bottom of the door with the blankets. Uh -huh. um, you recognize the voice as the voice of the person that was getting, uh, bashed to pieces by Yagra in the tavern. Um, it's Krentz, <laughs> uh, the member of the Xanathar guild that ran off. From the tavern. I'm gonna need Thornum to punch him in the face again. Well, right now they're behind a closed door, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am so tempted to do it. Should I? Should I, guys? <laughs> Should I? Just bust, I, I in, think, and, um... just bust in, open a door, just bust in okay. and be like, hey, do I look familiar to you? As you bust in, he takes me. one look at you and goes, ah, hell no! And he just books it in the other direction away from you. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so he's just gone. He's done. He's, he's, not he's Yeah, he's not interested in you. Is he out of line of sight of me? Yes. He immediately has gone through the door um, and round the corner. Um, however... Uh, there is a dwarf. There is a dwarf in the middle of the room. He's on this. Um, and he appears to be attempting to stack furniture against the door to the against the door up at the top right. That looks like fun. Uh, why are we stacking furniture on that door, um, Mister Mister Dwarf, sir? I don't want it getting out. Who? I don't want it getting out anyway. Who are you? Uh, me? I'm Bellinor. Uh, these are my friends. Uh... Oh, Kev, your name. What are you doing here? Oh, um... Business? <clears throat> We're looking for a pretty boy? Oh, we had a pretty boy here, right? Nice. I think he's getting tortured up in the main room. Ah. Uh -huh. In which direction yeah. is the main room? Wouldn't you like to know? You want to I go? would love to know. You want to go? You could get past me. Oh. Uh, hold on. Our, our pretty mm. boy's name is Floon. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's of no specific value, as far as we know. Mm, who cares about names and people? Boss is having oh, fun torturing him. I ain't getting involved. You want to get the boss? You go past me. Can we come just... to an amicable, uh, amicable like uh, discussion between the two of us? And you of course we can. Past? You can lie down and die, and I won't. I won't say anything mean. 
But I okay, like I'm to say mean arm. things. So, I mean, that, that, I feel like maybe I should say something mean, and then you should lay down and die. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice for all of us? I, I mean, honestly, you kind of look like a stupid fucking dwarf, and that's me actually going to go ahead and cast Vicious oi, Mockery. Oi, oi, Belenor, Belenor, pack that shit in. Yeah, well, sucks to suck. That's a, that's a Vicious Mockery right there. Roll initiative. <sighs> I was going to cast Charm Person on him before combat. I you can attempt just... to do that, um, but I will tell you for free before you actually use your spell slot. Um, he seems to be resistant to your ability to charm. I was going to ask the guy if he knew about the. What the fuck are these fuck? He's the there's fuck the bad. He's a drago. He's a deep. He's a deep dwarf. Deep um, dwarf, so he wouldn't know about the uh, mirror bar. They're highly Oops. resistant to magic. Well, my right. initiative was a seven, but do I get that vicious mockery cast? I will give it to you later. Um, Bear me a second. Uh, I need an initiative for uh, your sidekick. Uh, sidekick is going to roll a 18. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, he um, sort of looks over at you and... <sighs> Shut it. He gets a nat 20 on his wisdom save. Fuck um, me. Yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, take your sidekick's turn. I'll... My sidekick... Uh, no. Rainier. Yes. Rainier will walk up to him we with short sword. Hold in a second. God, that was loud. <laughs> I have it turned down. Yeah, I turned it up for the ambience and uh, forgot to turn it back down again. Um, yeah. yeah that's uh, go ahead, Rainier. Rainier is going to retcon his last statement, and he is going to instead pull out his short bow of the mm -hmm. many short bows and short swords that he had grabbed, and he is going to take a shot. That is a seven to hit uh that will hit yes that was a 17 and with that he will roll d8 for six damage hmm. fair enough okay and he will hide um back near me at the back behind yep. the door okay um you see this dragon sort of expand rapidly in size um he appears to be a large creature now um, he takes a war pick in his hand and he swings out at Thornham. Um, it doubles its... Okay, yep. Uh, that's fine. That's a 20 to hit you. Thornham. 20 does hit me. Okay, uh, that is 16 piercing damage. 16? That's what I said. Holy fucking um, shit. Okay. And then at this point, um, he, uh, he appears to sort of fade into the dark shadows. Um, I will need a perception check from anybody who wishes to attack him. Blake, you're up. So, um, okay. I guess we're fighting this guy. Um, He's fighting you. Okay, and, what, and is the party wanting to kill it? Or... Kind of an ugly fuck. Well, it's be pretty fucking hard, so yeah. He I has told you, you will not be able to get past him without him, without killing him. Oh, but we could just, like, tie him up if the pie wanted to. No, sure. fuck this guy. He's currently bigger than any of you and nearly invisible. Oh, c c can I not see him? You need to make a perception check if you wish to attack him. Okay, I'll do that. Um, okay, that doesn't... I rolled it, and it rolled on top of the edge of my tray, in between the edge of the tray and the can of coke. I won't yeah, I can kind of hear that. Um, that's an 18 perception. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, you are able to see him. You are able to make out his shadowy figure against the wall. Uh, you may attack. Okay, um, I'll draw my bow then. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's a five, and I'm going to fave bow him. That's a nine damage altogether. Okay. Cool. Uh, does that conclude your turn? Uh, yes. Thornum, you're up. I can see where the arrow, where the arrow slammed, right? Yeah, you can make a perception check with advantage. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, 14. I'm afraid you'll be attacking with disadvantage. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to second wind uh, real quick because uh, that hurt. Yeah, thought it might. Uh, Did yeah, you not take uh... a short rest? 
Kai and you? I did. Oh, okay. Kai, you seem to not have full HP. Yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah. And now I will attempt to swing with disadvantage with the Great Axe. Okay. Sort of in the general direction of where mm -hmm. the arrow slammed. Uh, yeah, that's a nine. Yeah, that's not doing it. Damn. No, that won't do it. Uh, Kai, <laughs> you're up. Okay. I don't want to do that because I didn't want to hit him. So I'm going to. Did you second win? No, right? He did. No, yeah, he but I'm nowhere near full. So yeah. Well, well, nowhere near. How is nowhere near full? Are you all right? He's fine. Not really. Oh, he's fine. Wait, you're all right. You're being a baby. He'll be fine. He's fine. I'm going to sacred flame him. Yeah. Okay. Um, you need to make a perception check first. Uh, no, sorry, you do not. No, passive is high enough. Oh, he got a nat 1 in his dex check. Oh, oh sucks, beautiful. Suck. Ooh, max damage, 8 damage. 8 radiant damage for him. Ooh, and you see that he shrinks in size. As he fails his con save. Unlucky for him. Mm -hmm. Um, Any bonus action from you? Uh... You can give Thornum a good berry with it if you wish. Yeah, fuck it. Let's give him a good berry. Thornum, do you want to use HP. your reaction for, to gain 4 HP? Sure, yeah. I'll cool. gain 4 HP. Thank you. It's Bellinor's turn. He's able. Is my Discord follows and arrows everyone really still? No, um, I'm, I'm, Oscar's not there. Just waiting. Oh, okay. Sorry, somebody decided to shatter glass in my home, so... Oh, lovely! Well, you'll be glad to know that Heather has granted you a natural 20 on your next attack. Well, um, Heather is going to make my perception a natural 20 so that no, I can see No, 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 you, uh, you can use that just to attack. Oh, I was going to use it on my perception so I could dissonance, dissonant whisper him. Oh, okay, that works. Yeah, so that's a wisdom save. 12. Fantastic. Let's roll those d6s. Six. Two. Five. So as, this... you, as you whisper a discordant melody out loud, you see his head begins to shake from side to side, for his eyes roll back into his head and blood drips slowly down his face. Black of blood. He falls dead into a heap in front of you. Yes, I'd like to describe that as Cotton Eye Joe, but only one in three, <laughs> not two in four. <laughs> it, bit... <laughs> um, and yeah, he falls dead on the ground in front of you. Um, and at that point, um, you are able to... Uh, um, you guys are able to have a little look at uh, this pickaxe. Um, he has a war pick, if you want it. Um, other than that, he has nothing of any use. Um, as he falls dead upon the ground. Damn, big ugly bastard was tough. Yeah, and his skull is now, um, his eyes are now backwards, and he's bleeding out of his eyes. Now, I want you guys to know that if you ever become big like that, I will sing Cotton Eye Joe to you. <laughs> um, as you look over to the room he was trying to barricade, uh, you see two goblin corpses are being slowly consumed by what appears to be a grey ooze that uh, seems to have emerged from a cesspit in the floor. It looks a little like uh, it might be it might have been being used as a lavatory. No shit out um, 
A monster. Uh, you may also each get 40 XP. Are you keeping track of his XP? He has at 132 experience. Okay, cool. Uh, so 40 XP. Uh, yeah, how about I propose we hard fucking avoid that room and say, screw that. You can definitely uh... see there are no exits. Um, however, yeah. as you look to the other door, um, you are able to look through and see that there is a raised platform inside. Upon which is a nightmarish figure wearing black robes, with large white eyes and rubbery purple skin, four tentacles encircling its inhuman mouth. It cradles and gently caresses what appears to be a disembodied brain with feet. And as you see this mysterious and dark image, well, in there. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. and uh, I missed the very last bit. It's, it's... You look through to see a raised platform to the south, upon which a nightmarish yeah. figure wearing black robes is sat. Yeah, it was the end bit, the last line that I missed. Large white eyes and rubbery purple skin, and four tentacles encircling its inhuman mouth. It cradles and gently caresses what looks like a disembodied brain with feet. And on that yes, dark we... image, we shall feet. end. Uh, MVPs. Ah. I come first to uh, Mr. No Discord, Josh. Um, so my MVP is actually just a little one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if this is uh, something you did, James, or if this is something from the books. Mm -hmm. um, I just liked the inclusion of the Kenku, because they're a race that you don't really see very often. Um, so yeah, I just really liked seeing them. Uh, yeah, they are very, they're in the book, but there's no flavor at all to the encounter or to what they're there for or why they say. Um, it just, it gives you a few standard phrases that they echo, but nothing else. Um, so it's my embellishment upon the book, but it's the book that includes the Kenko, and I thought it was really cool too. Um, and they're also mysteriously portrayed. You don't really know if they're evil or good or, I don't, as the DM, know whether they're evil or good, etc. So it's all, it gives you a lot of license to play with. Um, yeah, no, I can agree with that. What about you, Jamal? Uh, I've got two things here. Yep. First one is, um, short swords and short bows and short bows and short swords and short swords and short bows. <laughs> yeah. Funny Japanese, short bows and short swords. <laughs> I thought I was quite clear about it, personally. <laughs> I, was, I just wasn't sure if they were the, absolutely the only weapons or not, or whatever. Yeah. Short swords weapons, and short bows. It was just a oh. fuck ton of short swords and short bows. But no, yep. it turns out it was just short swords and short bows. Yep, and your other one? And my other one, kick it in, bust in the door and you remember me? And he goes, just fucking legs it. Oh, hell no! <laughs> yeah. like, that's two people that I managed to avoid fighting with just by fucking scaring Being the there. shit out of them. Yep. Um, Moon. Um, my first one is uh, Salty's inability to just let the one fucking bolt go. Yes. <laughs> Get 60 free bolts, but can I retrieve my one bolt? I actually only have 20 bolts. Yeah, he's it's 63 he... arrows. He has only 20 bolts. Ah, there no crossbow bolts so. there. But yes, he's down to 19. And so. then and then going, guards, did you see a bolt on him? As if they were going to grab the bolt and bring it with them. <laughs> well, you know, I was just wondering if he saw it sticking out of the Kenku, and if the Kenku was just like... Wanted to pull that out, maybe you know. You feel like maybe if we see this Kenku <laughs> later, I'll be like, "Hey, about that crossbow." Yeah, that one. Oh. And then my other one is uh, Josh's inability to let this goblin just be an idiot and let us go by. <laughs> and me being me being my character, like I guess I can try to help this guy because I understand this conversation because I speak goblin too. Yeah. It's like I really want this conversation to be over. He could have a magnifying glass. He can fuck around with that. I think. Yeah, goblins are so fun to roleplay. Um, Oscar. Uh, it, my MVP would have to go to, uh, the, uh, ability of Druidcraft to turn off the light in a environment where we get disadvantage because <laughs> the lights are off. <laughs> and then I'd follow that with a sneezing goblin. I like the sneezing goblin with the spice pouch. Yeah. Um, I forgot about that. No, I can agree with you, but the turning off the lights was my MVP. I think that was, uh, I, it was such an unnoticed part of their character sheet that I'd rolled two attacks by the time I read it and went, didn't he start this by turning off the lights? Cool. Um, <laughs> um, it's just like the one time I'm trying to be cool and creative, I fuck my party. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
I use my brain and I fuck my party every time. I think my MVP, though, goes to a really interesting inclusion in the book of Krentz, the bandit, who, if he escaped from the Yawning Portal, if you helped him in any way, he doesn't attack. If you, if you knocked him unconscious, he runs. And if you uh, tried to kill him and didn't succeed, he would attack you. What a really interesting callback to a tavern brawl at the beginning of episode one. Very, very did cool we, inclusion in the book. Uh, you both helped did and you harmed him. Help him and, yeah, I was gonna yes. like, I didn't help him. Up. Um, but I took it as you knocked him unconscious um, because um, <laughs> Thornham punched him. Also, Thornham was the first person to enter, and that's why yeah. I took what Thornham did. But I thought that was such a cool inclusion from the book. Um, I'm really enjoying the flavor of the Water Deep heist, which is what we're currently on. Um, it's the book we've interacted with, although there's been bits of other things. Um, but in terms of a couple of player MVPs, um, Josh paying absolutely zero attention to um, to Jamal doing no damage with an axe and following it up by expending <laughs> everything on his character sheet to do no damage. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. The Nat 20 zero damage mole. I love a creature that's immune to shit, um, especially yeah, regular that weapons. Brutal. That's just fun. Um, the fact that that's meant to be the last encounter of the, uh, dungeon, and you guys just wandered down there and battered the shit out of a were-rat for no fucking good reason whatsoever. Um, it, he, he only attacks if you have Renair with you. Um, Renair Never Ember, uh, the sidekick, he only attacks if you have that sidekick with you. <laughs> and, uh, the third fact is that, uh, you guys nerfing your own XP by bringing Renair along could end up being a really smart decision in the long run. Um, he... Having yourselves an extra player with a little roguey sidekick seems quite fun and quite cool, so I'm quite enjoying you guys including that. Um, also, by the way, yeah. uh, I do have a thing that can handle doors as well and locks. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the item you gave me? The um... Yeah, nitpicker. Is that you? It? Nitpicker, yeah. Yeah, we, we should see that at some point. I look forward to seeing yep. nitpicker. We yeah, it's just, I know you were talking before uh, about, um, about um, needing thieves tools or something because it got mentioned a lot and it's like, yeah, no. yeah, we might need well, it anyway. to a certain extent, but um, we can we can discuss that at a later time. But for now, yeah. I think uh, that is where we will end. Um, I'm bringing a guitar to next session, by the way, and I am doing it live. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. How about the fact that the immune fucking target is the one time I cast guiding bolt so far in this campaign? True, true. Um, <laughs> that was very well. Uh, that was a very good bit of luck. You would have been in a lot more trouble if you didn't. Um, nevertheless, that is where we will end, um, and, uh, we are going to host up Zed Clay. um, rank? No, raid, um, he is currently doing some artwork, he's a really excellent drawer, um, he doesn't really do much in the way of commissions, um, but he does some really cool art for you guys who are into busty women cartoons, and Ooh. such, and anime characters, and all of that, you'll be more than happy. Um, so please, uh, let's go show him some love. If you guys would like to say goodbye. Goodbye. See you guys tomorrow. We shall see you soon.